In this lesson, I want to talk about one of the variations of conservatism that exists, and this is this idea known as one nation conservatism. Now, one nation conservatism has quite a long historical development in terms of where it really begins, and it has a number of very interesting characteristics that still crop up in terms of policy and description of policy to this day. So, the concept itself of one nation conservatism is actually associated very strongly with the former prime minister Benjamin Disraeli. Uh, Disraeli is somebody who is um, considered to be a very seminal and um, very foundational prime minister within the sort of early um, the 1800s uh, period of uh, of the history of Great Britain. He was the Prime Minister in 1868, and then again between 1874 and 1880, so the sort of later period of uh, the Victorian era, for example. And we can find examples of what One Nation conservatism looks like in terms of its application to policy when we look at legislation that existed, especially in Disraeli's second term in office. So the second term in office being from 1874 to 1880. Um, uh, we see that, for example, the Employers and Workmen's Act of 1875. This lesson is going to essentially uh, take the idea of one nation conservatism and examine it in far more detail. So we can firstly let's ask we can firstly ask the question: What actually is one nation conservatism? What does it mean? What does it refer to? How does it actually work? Well, one nation conservatism actually came comes out of a response to socialism, class conflict, and free market capitalism. So remember, when we think back to conservatism as an ideology, we have to think about well, what is conservatism and where does it come from? It is always born out of a reaction to often radical political movements. The, the early traditional conservatives, people like Edmund Burke and to an extent Thomas Hobbes, although he was never a conservative, but he had that kind of thinking. They all wrote about and spoke in a reaction to the revolutions of, of, of the Enlightenment period, the revolutions in America, revolutions in England and the revolution in France. And so as a result of which, that is where traditional conservatism gets its essential reaction to. Um, but when we talk about one nation conservatism, this comes in around the, the, the second half of the 1800s. And it is a response to the growing rise of socialist writing, of class conflict and free market capitalism. All of these things being um, very important in the development of, of societal progress during this period. What One Nation Conservatism attempts to do is to update the views of the traditional conservatives uh, to effectively deal with the new threat, the new threat in inverted commas, the, the threats of these new radical political movements, the threats to socialism, the threats of socialism, the threats of class conflict and free market capitalism. And so as a result of which, One Nation Conservatism argues that society exists together as part of a single nation, hence the name, um, and that this nation is something of an organic, flexible and interconnected group within society. As a result of all of these factors, when issues arise in one area of society, it will therefore have an impact, potentially positive or negative. In the case of an issue, it would be negative. Um, it would have an impact on the rest of society as well. And this is a view which contrasts with socialist class dynamics and the idea of historical materialism. So very briefly, before we get on to historical materialism and before we get on to, um, uh, to socialism in more detail in a few lessons time, when we think about the view of class dynamics and historical materialism, it understands the, the, the working class as uh, fundamentally opposed uh, ideologically and also in their interests to that of the owner class, the, the, the bourgeois class versus the proletariat. And the idea here is that one uh, part of society, if an issue it, it impacted one part of society, it would have uh, potentially a positive impact on another part of society. This is one of the ideas that is uh, sort of embedded within the idea of, of dialectical materialism. So one nation conservatism actually completely rejects this understanding com uh, at a complete level. It says that, well, if no, if uh, one nation uh, is together and, and, and operates together as a single unified whole, um, which is organic, interconnected and, uh, and particularly flexible, it means that as a result of which the impact of one part of society will have an impact on the rest of society.
Disraeli himself described this as the fact that the palace is not safe when the cottage is not happy. The idea being that even if there are huge disparities between different parts of society, especially in relation to things like class, the impact, negative impact of one would have a negative impact on the other. Which has a which is obviously um, completely correlative. Uh, whereas, um, uh, whereas socialism contrasts these ideas, the idea that there is actually a a, a conflict that exists between various class dynamics. In addition to understanding the nation as a single unified whole, we have the idea of uh, changing to conserve, of course, cropping up again in this um, in this uh, particular part of conservatism. Disraeli himself was actually concerned about the impact of free market capitalism on society, which is actually quite interesting given the fact that conservatives today are more likely to be aligned with the free market than that of non-conservatives, people like liberals and socialists. And so he recognised, however, that some aspects of the free market were potentially uh, inevitable. Um, so as such, what Disraeli wanted to do is to accept the free market, but then also to understand that there are very bad consequences or to look at the worst consequences of the market and to tackle those with government and, uh, and, and state intervention. And this would essentially allow for the changing of, of, of and development of society and the economy, but conserving um, social values. Um, this is just another example of the the, uh, conservative understanding of changing to conserve, which is fundamentally a thread which runs through all of these lessons in relation to one nation conservatism, as well as what we're going to look at in the next lesson, which is this idea of modern conservatism.